do you think the earlier studies that were kind of bearish on vitamin E and not supporting it was because they were testing tocopherols as a supplement? And if people take this specific form that you're producing, these tocotrienols, does it have different effects in terms of health benefits? Thank you. That's an excellent question. Uh, right now, it is already 15 years after I have lesser of a tsunami to overcome. I remember it was 1995, 2000. I thought I've given my whole life to study toco trieno, toco trieno as a vitamin E. I remember I struggled with it. In the original study, when people use tocopherol, they use copious amount, 400 IU to 1000 IU, meaning about 300 to almost 800 milligram of alpha tocopherol, very specific and most of the time synthetic and even worse in the absorption. So they take those kind of vitamin E. And then they found out that almost all the study did not work. And if anything, it may didn't work. If anything, it may do some harm like prostate right. cancers. And then now people uh, go back to the original amount. So the question now is, I have lots of study that I accumulated. Why alpha tocopherol is detrimental to us? And the RDA of alpha tocopherol can be gotten from our food. So we don't need supplemental alpha tocopherol. Mm. Toco try, you know, why is that differentiated? In 19. 8079 in University of Wisconsin, the professor extracted something from barley. They barely have any oil at all. It's a gluey black material. They stick it to hypercholesterolemic pygmy uh, pig. And then they found out that it dramatically lowered the cholesterol. So they were in search for a pin in the haystack and found out that it actually was a tocotrienol molecule. So that was the first published work that tocotrienol have differentiated properties than mm -hmm. tocopherol. They are all antioxidant, but for lowering cholesterol, tocopherol does not do that. Tocotrienol does. And mm -hmm. since then, anti-cancer, anti-inflammation. So right now, we have now about 20 to 30 clinical trials, more than half of them already published. So I just gave you the shorthand answer on it works. Tocotrienol, not tocopherol, works on chronic condition. The chronic condition that we have tested it on, they are all randomized studies, some of them placebo control as well and blinded as well. They are on diabetes, pre-diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, fatty liver disease, and also postmenopausal women with osteopenia. We are momentarily about to publish a study now in collaboration with UC Davis. And this study is to show non-targeted metabolomics to study postmenopausal also women given toco trienol to see how the metabolism would change. And in it, it promotes the synthesis of glutathione and reduce some metabolic fiber to increase DHEA and progesterone in these postmenopausal women to help in the growth. In another group of study on chronic condition, on cancer study, we are now still going on in Denmark. The cancers we are covering lung, colon, breast, ovary and my colleague that we are not involved in the study pancreas in all of those studies that are published today it definitely worked to either reduce or to mitigate those cancer studies so this is thrilling tocopherol does not do this only tocotrienol does and we believe the reason is because of the shortened tail is able to efficiently able to protect the 38 trillion cells we have in our body those are fantastic very promising results um, and given that 88 percent of adult americans are on the metabolic syndrome spectrum in terms of having pre-diabetes, diabetes, diabetes prehypertension, hypertension, dyslipidemia, a lot of the conditions that you mentioned, it sounds like it's a potentially beneficial supplement. Given that our audience is particularly, tends to be healthier, younger men, do you mm -hmm. think there's any benefit with tocotrienol mm -hmm. supplementation for that group in terms of preventing chronic disease? And if so, what is the recommended dosage? For younger men, we tend to be active uh, not me. I, I'm approaching 70 years old. So for younger people, they tend to be exercise active. So taking tocotrienol minimally would be for antioxidant protection. And the amount that we have done in our study to protect oxidative damage, we measure fatty acid that is uh, oxidized, how that is reduced. And for some of them, we measure uh, uh, C-reactive protein, a measurement uh, of inflammation like that to see uh, how that can, can be mitigated. Then the amount 
amount usually is about 125 milligram, even as low as 75 milligram would work. But very active, energetic people, 125 milligram would be a good start. If they have a family history of heart diseases, cardiometabolic diseases, then probably 250 milligram. 